So good to see all of you here on Palm Sunday. She's here with us once again. Won't you please welcome the lovely and talented Miss Amy Ione. everybody on this wonderful Palm Sunday as we welcome spring today. I'm Bev Spivey, your co-minister, flying solo today. Lawrence, my, yes, our uh, co-minister, Reverend Lawrence Palmer, and my husband is in Texas officiating a friend's wedding. So he sends his greetings. Lawrence, are you watching us? Or did you decide to go to Unity in the Hills in Austin? You'll find out later. Let's, in case he's there, let's say hi. Hi. Hi, Lawrence. And to our others turning, tuning in on live stream this morning, we give you the biggest welcome and invite you to join and feel that spiritual family and that sense of community that's here this morning. So as we begin, we have our wonderful music team under the direction of James McCoy. Good morning. <laughs> Would you please welcome Mr. Max Farber at the piano this morning. We have Mr. Pedro Barroas at the drum set. And you met Amy Ione. Wonderful. Good to have all of you. And so we gather on this beginning of Holy Week and just with such joy to have a spiritual facility and community here to come to. So let's begin with knowing that this year we have a theme every month. And this month our theme is pray. We are an exciting spiritual community, and we take a challenge every month of focusing on something. This month, it is pray. We also have our vision. Let's say that together. Centered in God, we create an ever-expanding spiritual community of one, and we see ourselves with this mission. Together, we are a spiritual beacon of inspiration, abundance, and enlightenment. And let's begin taking those ideas into prayer. As we take a breath together and blow that out and relax into this day, as we see the raindrops and the clouds dissipate and the beautiful sun shining on this day of the equinox as we welcome spring, we also welcome spring into our hearts as we spring forth with joy and enthusiasm. 
enthusiasm. As our founder, Charles Fillmore, quoted, and do that which is ours to do in this day. So rather than think of things to do right now, we just relax together, being ready to enjoy the music, the lesson, the community here, as we focus on our knowledge that indeed we are a spiritual beacon. And indeed we are a spiritual being. And so it is. Amen. Let's all stand and get the blood flowing a little bit this morning. This is one of the unity standards we've done for a long time. But this is what we call call and response. I'm going to be the call and you repeat as the response, okay? Let's sing together. From the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth, to the depths of the sea, to the depths, from the height of the heavens, your name. Shouts of the storm from the shelter, from the lips of all people. This song we raise, go together. to do now is to welcome any of you who may be here for the very first time. We have a simple welcome brochure to give you, so if you would please raise your hand if you're with us for the first time. The ushers will get that into you. If you keep your hands up till they find their way to you, this brochure will tell you about the Unity Movement, it will tell you about this Unity facility, it has our office contact on the back, and we invite you to put your contact information in there and give us at least your email, which is how we send out notices. Um, but everybody go to unitypompanobeach.org and look on our website as we keep up with the latest events and activities there. You can also use that website to donate. You, uh, if you're away and you haven't had a chance to get your offering in, you can also use that website to request counseling or meetings of any kind. So go to the website, and I met some of you already this morning that found us by way of the website, so we appreciate that and glad that you're here. We always have fellowship time after every service, so do everyone come to Fellowship Hall afterwards and we can <coughs> socialize a bit. Prayer is very important here, and so we have prayer available for the half hour prior to service. The first room in Fellowship Hall there starting through the breezeway, um, and also after the service, the chaplains will stand 
in here to be available for prayer, but you can also go to the prayer room once again uh, after the service for some private prayer. It's a wonderful way to finish your week or start your week. The announcements today. Tonight we have our drumming circle. John Moore is going to lead that for us. Lawrence won't be back till the morning. And I could not take on drumming. You know, I can pound a drum, but that's about it. So, <laughs> yeah, not that kind of drumming. We, we know, Bev, kazoo is your instrument, so <laughs> yeah, we, we know that. I'm the kazoo queen. I can handle kazoo band. The Betty. kazoo queen. <laughs> I think that needs to be your Halloween costume. We do need to get our kazoo band together. How many of you still have your kazoos? Absolutely. James, put that on your list. Okay, let's bring them next week. It's Easter. James, really? That's a joke. Yeah. But maybe the week after. Okay. Dust off your kazoos. Back to the announcements. Where are we? Oh, drumming tonight. The weather may be kind of threatening today. If it is raining in Pompano at 6 or looks like it's going to be a big downpour, just come to Fellowship Hall and we will have our drumming circle there at 7. But if it continues to look pretty good, we will meet at the beach uh, at Atlantic in A1A. All right, our women's retreat is uh, underway now, coming up on May 6th. It is time for you to let us know that you're coming and reserve a spot so that we can plan appropriately. The deposit is $100, but if you do not have that $100 right now, Please do sign up anyway and leave some sort of a deposit so that we can plan all our space. And women, this is for any friend of yours. They need not be in unity. Uh, all women are very welcome to come to our retreat. And now Holy Week begins today, and we are so looking forward to sharing all of our activities in this coming week with our sister Unity Church, Unity of Fort Lauderdale. They will be coming here, and they will be joining us. So beginning on Thursday evening, their chaplains will join our chaplains right here in hosting our Monday Thursday service, our Holy Thursday service. This commemorates the Passover and Jesus' time with the disciples in Jerusalem during those final days. We will have uh, a commemorative hand-washing ritual that many of you are familiar with and uh, also communion in Fellowship Hall. If you're a little nervous about what all this means, come out and see for yourself. We're not far from the parking lot. You can always jump up and leave if it's too much. <laughs> but I promise you it, it will be rewarding. Unity doesn't have very many ceremonies and rituals, and we like to plug that in to really honor the roots of where we came from and mix that with our newer understanding. So come on out on Thursday night. And the same with Good, Pr Good Friday. There will be a prayer vigil that we have done every year. Uh, noon to 3 o'clock, Reverend Louise Morley will be here. And uh, this is a time when you can slip in. It's in quiet and leave again uh, if you have some time during that 12 to 3 o'clock time. And then Friday night is something new, and I... As curious about this as the rest of you because Lawrence has planned this and hasn't told me much about it. If you have signed up to be one of the readers, check your email. If you have not, he has sent out information about Friday night, and all our readers need to be here ready to roll at 6 o'clock. Everybody else come at 7, and this will be a presentation of Khalil Gibran's book, Jesus, the Son of Man. So come on out for that on Friday night. And Saturday night, then, we will really celebrate in here um, watching Jesus Christ Superstar together for yet another perspective of Jesus. So come on out for our Holy Week services. And, of course, next Sunday, then, is Easter Sunday. All children are invited to come. All families, children, and teachers will be in the service. There will be no Sunday school. And following our service... Uh, there will be an Easter egg hunt for the kids and any adults that want to participate. So we look forward to having you all for that. Our Easter lily dedication uh, we're doing again this year. This is a time when you can think of a special loved one or anything at all that you want to dedicate your love to on this Easter Sunday. 
and sign up in the narthex we're asking ten dollars per lily and at the end of the service you will take your lily home where you may use it or gift it to someone else and uh, we're expecting that we will have our altar area all filled with white lilies for uh, our wonderful celebration on Easter morning so that's the sign up for that and the sign up for the women's retreat are out on the narthex uh, counter and then lastly it's time for our women to have uh, their monthly meeting will be April 2nd so this is just giving you a heads up on that from 2 to 4 on Saturday April 2nd we're going to be talking about integrity and the other one for your calendar is April 5th we start again with our class you know we've had two weeks off and we're missing it already our Tuesday night class group so come on out on uh, five weeks beginning April 5th each week will be a different experience of a different kind of meditation this will be much more experiential we will be much into our heart more than our head in this class but Cynthia and I and Reverend Lawrence will be here to uh, facilitate that class so come on out for everything we've got going on we we welcome you to all of it and let's now stand and greet each other with our hugs or handshakes <laughs> Good morning, everyone. 
as we take our seats. It takes us a little while to calm down and to get everything together. Good morning. My name is Jim Showerty. I'm a former board member, and I'm reading the Daily Word today. The Daily Word for today is, I am. All that God is, I am. In the book of Exodus, Moses learns that God's true name is, I am. Made in God's image and likeness, all that God is, in truth, is, uh, all the God is in truth is I am also I am with God as my essence I know that I am intrinsically good I readily express the unconditional uh, love and forgiveness that I am in truth claiming infinite wisdom as my unfailing source I am also wise and compassionate in all my affairs, creative and prosperous in all my activities. I claim only the highest quality of being for myself. I refrain from putting words of lack and limitation after the phrase, I am. Through the Christ in me, I affirm that I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. A divine expression of God, God's glory in this world. All that I, all that God is, I am, and all is well. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Of glory. Colossians 1.27. Thank you. And as the prayer chest comes forward, we'd now like to begin a time of prayer and meditation by singing together. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. you want to shut your eyes to shut out the distractions around us let's just settle into this quietness now feeling the presence of the Lord this means the Lord of our being the presence of the very I am spirit in you and in me and in each other person that we ever come across we feel the presence when we can focus our thoughts on knowing that it is the Lord and indeed see ourselves as that spiritual being always connected, giving us confidence 
giving us strength, giving us joy and peace. I invite you to take a deep breath together now and hold it for a minute. Blow that out. Relax the various muscles starting at the top of your head. Even allow your jaw, your tongue, your neck to relax. Let relaxation flow into your shoulders, your arms. Some of us hold so much tension there in our shoulder and neck area. Feel relaxation in those areas now. You may want to envision a white light that starts at the crown of your head and shines down through you if you are a visual person. Or you may just want to feel the muscles relaxing. On down, blessing our organs as we move down through our torso and send healing love and light to our lungs and our hearts, our liver, our kidneys, bladder, pancreas, the many cells all working to provide our life. We go on down through our hips and our reproductive systems, blessing all that we are as human beings. And we relax our legs and our feet as we feel grounded to the floor, grounded to this life, living in this world with an understanding with the energy of the great I am, never separated from our I am awareness, only separated in awareness, never truly separated. And so let us hold this thought in our mind as I read this segment of the Daily Word. Through the Christ in me, I affirm that I am whole and perfect, a divine expression of God's glory in this world. Can you feel that you are whole? Can you feel that you indeed are a divine expression? Hold that thought of yourself as we sit in silence allowing our thoughts to still and just enjoying this peaceful state of being for a few moments in the silence. As we sit peacefully in the silence and I hear the sweet little voice of children, it adds to our experience of love and peace. As we hear the noises of traffic and equipment, 
It adds to our feeling of gratitude that we live in a time and a place where it's easy for us to move about and be comfortable. We allow these impressions that come to our mind to just slide on by as we continue that feeling of joy and gratitude and peace. And now we bring those feelings with us into our life today and we remain centered as we fully enjoy all that life has to bring to us. And so it is. Amen. And let us close this prayer time with singing hallelujah. Precious one, take my hand, lead me on, let me stay. Take my hand. 
That's Amy Yone. Notes. <laughs> Not that I ever refer to them, but I start out that way. Wow, that familiar hymn. How many of you feel that right down to your very core? Yes, yes. The idea of Precious Lord Take My Hand not only was an inspiration to the songwriter at a time in his life when he was at his very depths, but it reaches all of us. Inspiration reaches all of us no matter what avenue it comes from, be it artwork or music or someone's words. But you know, this monthly theme of prayer, Reverend Lawrence's lessons have been all about how our prayer life, it hinges on our concept of God, and our, mixed in with that now is our concept of Jesus. How we perceive God influences the type of prayer and how we pray and actually how we think of ourselves. So this Palm Sunday begins Holy Week, and we look forward to a number of various kinds of celebrations here. But Holy Week is all about Jesus, isn't it? And those of us raised in traditional Protestant and Catholic churches grew up with the meaning of Lord as used in this uh, hymn this morning uh, that we sang and, and the soloist sang. We grew up with the idea of Lord meaning Jesus. Whereas in Jesus' day, the meaning of Lord was the Lord of your being. That is the ancient Hebrew term that the psalmists and the writers of the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, referred to God because they could not speak the name of God because it was to them disrespectful. And so they used the term Lord, meaning the Lord of your being, that which dwells within you. And when you read some of the Psalms, you will see Lord sprinkled throughout. So our hope is that through these services and the lessons that we have during Holy Week. If you have any conflict or confusion in your mind about the role of Jesus, about the life of Jesus, your concept of God, now's the time to reconcile that. And if you don't have confusion but you're simply strengthening your concept of the divine, this is the week for that as well. So we hope you'll participate as we look at these different perspectives of Jesus. Of course, Thursday night is all about our biblical perspective. And so what came to me in talking about this this week, thinking about it, I was a Girl Scout leader way back in the day. Some of you have met my daughter, but she was in Girl Scouts, and of course I was a Girl Scout leader. And we did uh, camping and all of the activities. So one of the songs that was sung very often and may be familiar to some of you is keep, oh my goodness, make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. 
Make new, we won't bust into song, but we could. I see some of you know it. Make new friends. Yes, make new friends, but keep the old. For the old is golden and the new is silver woven with it. And that's how I'd like you to think about Holy Week and our Christian traditions. We have golden traditions in the writings that came from the first century. And we have silver threads now with newer understanding, especially in these last 200 years where archeology span and all the sciences and all the Bible scholarship has taught us so much more about what life was in those early centuries and what their belief systems were. So we're weaving all of that in. Thursday evening will be the traditional hand washing and communion, but we'll put our unity perspective with that also. And then of course, during the prayer vigil, Reverend Louise usually uses the words from the cross that were written. And what you may not realize, you see, this is much like if you were here at Christmas time. At Christmas time, we have stories, two, di two different versions of the birth of Jesus written by two different gospel writers, but what Matthew and Luke. But what we have done and we, what we grew up with is melding that all together and having one big pageant. And so it goes with Easter and Holy Week. Each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, records uh, a memory of the events that week, but they're different. Even the words on the cross are different. One writer says Jesus said this. Another writer says Jesus said this. And yet another writer, Jesus said this. But what do we know? We grow up and we mix it all together and we think that this was all factual. At least some of us were taught that way. But indeed, Jesus' life is a mystery, isn't it? There is nothing that is what would be evidentiary uh, documentation from that time period. But yet, we have the remembered oral stories that began to be written down a half century after Jesus and continuing for the next 50 years in these gospel writers. So what's good for us to know is they are writing their experience of Jesus. None of them actually knew the man Jesus or witnessed what he was going through that week. However, the oral stories passed along, along, along as the idea of following Jesus' teaching spread throughout the Mediterranean. And so by the fourth century, what had then become Christianity and had been become the Church of the Roman Empire, which we know as the Catholic Church, the church leaders began to get concerned that there were all of these different writings and stories circulating all the way from Egypt and into Turkey and all of Asia Minor. And the different churches were teaching different things. And so they began to get a standard theology, and they developed what we know as the Bible canon, which has been revised since then. And there have been a lot of translations. So it's not to get hung up on the scholarship, although if I have another lifetime, I'd love to do that. But it is to know that we don't fault the people of the first century for their views about life and God. No, it's a golden thread that we add to that now, our newer understanding. So as we weave together these remembered accounts, we also understand that in the telling of them, there were many other accounts that didn't get put into the canon, and that's why archeologists have such excitement in finding fragments of things now and trying to find with it if they're authentic. And as you might guess, there were a lot of cir stories circulating that were quite embellished and never did happen. And so the church sought to, you know, at least get that in some uniform system. So that's just a little bit of history of how we got here. And so by the time we come along 2,000 years later, we celebrate the Easter pageant called the Passion Play as a conglomeration 
of it all, which is okay, because what we're after is the feeling of Jesus, and more specifically to the point of our monthly theme, what about prayer? How did Jesus pray? Well, we don't know exactly. Some of you may say, well, we have the Lord's Prayer. Yes, we do. That, too, is in two different versions. And that, too, would be remembered statements that Jesus made. And these writers were inspired. They were devoted to their concept of God and their concept of Jesus. But by the time they were writing, this formation of the Christian church had already developed its theology. And the theology was, how could such a horrible thing as crucifixion happen to such a wonderful man as Jesus? And so they developed their ideas about sacrifice to appease a supreme being. And now we know that that no longer holds water. That has been thoroughly discredited because we just know differently now. And we can see from the other writings that not everybody thought that way either. So what is the metaphysical lesson, and what about Jesus? Well, we can tell by the accounts that are written about Jesus, whether or not we get into the little minutia of the details, we see that in all of them, Jesus always had a concept of God as part of him that statement, the Father and I are one. He always knew his oneness. He was always confident about that. He didn't sway. And uh, not like some of us, you know, we have a crisis of faith and we're not sure about God and we're not sure about this and, and that's okay, that's part of our path. But it's not written that Jesus ever got into that. Apparently Jesus got everything resolved in his mind before he started his ministry uh, and there's three years that the stories are written about. So Jesus was clear on his concept of oneness with God. Jesus was also very confident and said that he spoke with authority. Well, what's that but affirm affirmations, right? We speak with authority when we teach positive prayer and finding the truth. It's also noticed that during this Holy Week of so much going on and so much stress, really, in Jesus' life. How did he handle that? Well, he stayed with the stress of the crowds, but he would also go apart for a while, and he would take his disciples with him and then go apart from them for that quiet time, which we know is so very important. So we can see that even now, Jesus demonstrated for us his prayer method. Get apart get to a quiet place, and wait for your guidance. And another big part of I see that in Jesus' life in this, in this holy week, he didn't do the expected. He released the expectations of others and did what he felt he should do. You see, Palm Sunday, as the, the palm branches waved, and it's written that Jesus rode into uh, the outskirts of Jerusalem, and there were throngs and crowds of people. Now, remembering all of them would have been Jewish, they were all gathering in Jerusalem for the Passover. Jerusalem was already a highly populated central city, but then others came there. That's where the temple was, and they came there for this important feast of the Passover. So Jesus rode in, and the crowds were cheering, Hosanna, Hosanna. We think Hosanna, Hosanna is like, hallelujah, great he's here. Well, it was kind of hallelujah, great he's here. But Hosanna, the Hebrew meaning is save us, save us. Remember that the Jews had been oppressed for the longest time by, now by the Romans, but prior to that. And they kept thinking that God, that a supreme being would send them a physical deliverer to restore their kingdom like it was a thousand years before under King David, the glory days. And so this idea started to grow, and it started sprinkling throughout the mob, throughout the crowds, and they all hinged on this idea of, oh, 
Maybe he's the Messiah. Maybe he's the Messiah. Maybe he's the Messiah. And so that crowd mob mentality was developing, and they had an expectation that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. And some of them thought he was going to ride on into Rome and, I don't know, do what? I don't know, but throw out the Romans. So you see, that's the undercurrent. Can you imagine the stress of your life in your everyday life? We all have our stresses. Can you imagine the stress on Jesus with all of this going on? And even in his closest circle, as he pulled apart and he took his disciples with him, even in his circle of disciples, they were confused. And you can read in some of the accounts of them questioning who he was, what was he going to do. And so the metaphysical lesson in this about Palm Sunday is that in each of us is this great I am. In each of us is our basis God life. That's what lives us and breathes us. But we also have the duality of being able to totally ignore it and totally think differently. So within us, this great I am, as it rides into our life, as it exists in our life, it can uplift our thoughts to this feeling of hallelujah, I feel great. But if you allow the crowded thoughts in your mind to squeeze out the good, to squeeze out that feeling of greatness and begin to worry and begin to wonder what's going to happen next and what's going on. You lose sight of the very concept of God that Jesus never lost sight of, and that was the Father and I are one. God is in me, and when God is in me, I know that there are solutions and things will work out however they work out. The, some of you follow the Course in Miracles, and I thought the lesson today was especially related to this. Lesson 80, let me recognize my problems have been solved. Let me recognize my problems have been solved. You see, when we get stuck in the problem and we begin defining all the things that are going wrong, we're not anywhere close to that feeling of God within. How is our problem solved? Because God is always with us. And the more we can open up to that God presence within us, guiding us, leading us, we will be led to the solutions. And apparently, the outcome on Easter was what Jesus decided to go ahead with. And we'll leave some of that for Reverend Lawrence next week. But for us today is to remember that Jesus' concept of God was that of oneness, of turning within for guidance. And that's a model we certainly follow in our teachings and in our prayer life. So as we weave these golden threads of tradition into our silver threads of understanding, we can have a very rich and rewarding Holy Week experience. Being full of that appreciation to feel the essence of Jesus, the man that he was, the strength that he had, the courage, the wisdom, and all the wonderful teachings that we are left with. So I encourage you to use this Holy Week to do your weaving of the silver and the gold. And I look forward to seeing you all during the week at our services. God bless. And now as we come to the end of this service and get ready for our fellowship time, we do want to take an opportunity to receive your gifts today, knowing that Unity is uh, Unity of Pompano is fully supported by all of the gifts from you. We thank you so very much. We thank you for those of, who have decided to make a commitment to regular giving. And if you give regularly through bill pay or some other arrangement, pull out the green card that's in there with the blessing on it and hold that in your hand, and you may even put it in the plate if you like, to represent that you are giving to this spiritual community the place where you value what we do. And if you're here for the first time, we really do welcome you to stay for fellowship. We welcome you to take advantage of prayer afterwards. So. 
As you prepare your gifts, know that you have our great gratitude for your giving, and let's bless it together. With a grateful heart, I acknowledge God as source of all that is. Today, I declare good for myself and all others. Good is mine. Good and more good is mine. And ever-increasing good is mine. Everywhere I go, I see this good. I, ex I experience it. I freely give it. And it multiplies itself around me. And so it is. Sunday salsa. <laughs> Our chaplains are taking their spots along the aisles for you to have available someone to pray with. There's Nancy and Jack and Cynthia over there. And here we have Susan and Kirsten, Ron and Linda. Won't you take advantage of some good positive prayer? I see our children are coming in. We'll see if they, any of them might want to come up on the stage. Children, are you here? 
Hi, anybody want to come up here? Come on, kids. This little light of mine, I want to let it shine. This little light of mine, I want to let it shine. This little light of mine, I want to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. to bring their children. We have classes for uh, kindergarten through elementary school and then a class for the older kids in middle school and high school. And Mia, I like your ponytail. Okay, here's another little one. Wonderful. Do you want to lead the prayer for protection? Okay, everybody, would you stand, please, as we close? The light of God surrounds us. The love of God is full of us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is in all things for us.